All right, I am starting to prep the elevator parts. Just take everything out, lay them out, deburr, take the stickers off with Goo Gone, um, flute with the fluting pliers to straighten the, the ribs. Ooh, look at all this. Look how big these spars are. Oh, let's measure that. 117, so nine, nine feet, nine inches. I already fluted these guys a bit and needed it. I don't know if you can see it. They were, um, but here, let me try to find one. There's usually a bow to it just from manufacturing. In fact, well, these come free, free fluted. That's pretty cool. So they're pretty darn flat. Awesome. But every single hole, I'm gonna deburr, and then um, wherever aluminum is gonna come in contact with a flat surface, I'm gonna make sure and sand that down so it just doesn't create a fatigue crack over time. Pick it up, rotate it 180 degrees this way. Okay. Um, hang on. Before um, we do that, um, these obviously won't. So we'll move it um, a hair this way so that they'll just be. Look at all those. All up. And all those quicos on the. Yeah. Um, I'll just, I'll move, I'll knock those down for right now and okay. then I'll and adjust those. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's not real. I probably do it myself. It's just a little awkward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> you can crack yourself. Okay, ready? I'm fucking hilarious. I am recording this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Wait, wait, are you flipping it this way? Oh, and oh, by the way, the, the bottom skins are yeah, not attached. Are you so. flipping it this way? Yes. Okay. Leading edge towards the teeth. That's okay. There we go. Uh -huh. And Man, it's been about a day and a half of work and I haven't filmed any of it because it is just match drilling and deburring and taking apart and putting together. So hands are tired, but here's what I have. I'm about ready to rivet this frame together. I do want to mention that I um, went ahead and bought some primer for where the hinges attach because the rivets are steel rivets and you don't want to use steel versus aluminum without it being primed. So also primed the hinges and hope that I got enough inside of the uh, holes here. So let's rivet this bad boy together. And then uh, after I rivet this together, I'm not going to put on the skins because I am waiting for a countersink and a micro stop because I've got a dimple, I've got the dot dimple die, but you've got a flush rivet, the inner um, 
rivets such that it can fit flush against the skin of the tail comb. So if I can get this done, I've got about two more days till I get that tool. So I'm gonna pretty much put this away and hopefully get the elevator done before the other tools show up and then I can skin this guy. Here I am cutting the piano hinges for the elevator trim tap. Hold on, people. Look, we got your griddles. Uh, uh, that's baby making music. That's what that is. Uh. Let's go. Double and triple check the orientation. If you bend it the wrong way, it's unusable. Trash. I mounted it the wrong way, so now I'm second guessing. So I got a triple and quadruple check before we bend. Why are we doing it in the kitchen? Because this counter is the right length to support the entire skin as well as have some empty space on the side for the rebar to go over. facing side. Therefore, it's the right aileron. The top skin needs to go down towards the bottom. Therefore, this is upside down. It needs to go up. The trickiest thing I found was the couple, couple tricks the four times I did it in the factory was getting both people to kind of move at the same rate. Right. Um, and then also, but probably even more so, is keeping a downward force on this. Okay. Now this is good because it's steel, it's not gonna flex too much, but it still will flex because it's quite a bit of pressure. Um, it's not as much as you would imagine, but also once, once the Clicos raise up enough so they're not engaged with the countertop, you know, if you're pushing sideways, it can slip back. So let's just try to keep you know, get downward force so that this doesn't slide anywhere. <clears throat> I think the more leverage, the better, but you don't want to be crazy far apart. So, uh, how far do you think? I'd say, you know, you know what? Uh, do you have some black tape? Oh yeah, I have some blue tape. Blue, whatever. You could uh, <clears throat> put a marker on there and so that we don't inadvertently yeah. slide in or out. I'm searching for a good reason why it's <laughs> so completely this. Clearly didn't get these put the things straight. Okay. So yeah, and the other thing is if we uh do you want to put the, the tape inside? Oh, I, okay. Yeah, that, I was thinking add, I was thinking that would be the stop. Yeah, that way that'll add a little bit more, you know, security okay. to it. So you can just eyeball if it'll fit. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay, and then just grab it towards the top. Yeah, so Okay, let's, uh, walk, let's just think. Yeah, so this. as far as speed goes, I'd say just. I'll just, just match you. Match I'm going to hold, hold a hand here. Yep, same here. Okay. And what worked well to get, because it'll spring back, and what we want to have is the cleat goes just ever so slightly past 90 degrees. So, so these things are going to go, they're going to be sticking out that way. When we're open. when we release tension, yeah. yeah. Okay. But but to, in order to get that, they want to be sticking 
past straight yeah, up. Yeah, got go it. About, so they want to be about like this? Yeah, when we release tension. Yeah. So when we roll, we're going to go all the way till just past vertical. Let's just do vertical for now. We'll go all the way till vertical. So this is going to go all the way straight down so that the cleat goes are all the way vertical and then we'll slowly release and it'll they'll spring back to probably a little bit below. Really? Yeah, a little bit okay. Lower. Yeah. All right. Let's um Do you want to you want to let's just let's just go 90 and see. Okay. And then we'll spring to, to maybe 45. Okay. So Hang on. So so back pressure initially, but then you don't want to keep back pressure because once those clicos go past 90, they're not going to engage with the um, counter anymore, and so then they'll slide. So so you want to put a little mostly transition from about 45 degree pressure to straight down straight pressure. Straight down. Yep. And but eventually the clicos will you be in your way. Stand, you know out here like you're doing or would it make sense if you're gonna have to because you're gonna have to pull this all the way down to here okay and you're not gonna be able to do that while you're standing all right okay ready yes and here we go that's about good let's just release see where they go to to prove to you that there's spring back and we need to go quite a bit oh that's a fact okay yeah yeah i got a right. door handle over here uh, Hold on. Let's back up again. You got to Oh, you got to I'm clear, but yeah. Okay, I'm so going to get my hand away from these three coats. That's got to be right there. Okay. Release pressure on your yeah, so it's still facing a little bit down. We want about that same angle down, but up. So, let's bend it only about I don't know how much more. A little bit more screw. Hang on, hang on, stop, stop. Release a little bit. That wasn't quite ready, plus I'm hitting, I'm grinding against the. Here. What? I can't go any more forwards towards you. What do you want me to do? Okay, let's go. That's good, that's good. Perfect. Good. Nope, that looks awesome, actually. It's really good. If you hold it up to your eye and take a look. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. So now, now it's now we just unplico it and move on to the next one. All right. Look at that. Cool. I hope it's the right direction. <laughs> well. Okay. Ready? One, mm -hmm. two, three. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Use your help on that. Do it this way. So the double notches are on that side. That's good. Oh my gosh. First off, thanks to all those other builders who are vlogging about their build experience, whether it's a how-to or just inf informational, um, I've learned a ton. Um, you may learn something on this channel, but that's not going to be my focus. Um, my focus is going to be trying to make it entertaining and for just airplane nuts like me, just being able to look at kind of what somebody's going through and maybe focus on the struggles, right? So I'm going to show you some of the stupid things I did and who knows, maybe it'll take a life off on its own and it's how to, how to not build a Rans S21 outbound. But listen, everything so far has not been catastrophic. I have had to order a few more rivets from Rands, and I find myself waiting on some parts. Um, I did just get a countersink with a micro stop, uh, so that's awesome. I'm gonna start dimpling and uh, prepping the horizontal uh, tail, but I'm rambling now. So that was my vent. I just needed to kind of get it off my chest that, um, you know, setting up a camera, making sure that there's no copyright infringement behind me, like the Dodgers game. Um, making sure my table is clean. I'm gonna kind of stop doing that. Yeah, I gotta focus on the, the copyright, but um, if you bear with me, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna film. And there may be some updates that are not very interesting, but my goal is to make them a little bit entertaining. Maybe make some crazy um, um, angles with some uh, shallow depth of field, make it artistic a little bit. But um, 
anyway, I just wanted to kind of share you with what I'm thinking, what I'm kind of struggling with, how to format these videos. But all right, well, uh, let's talk about some things that I've messed up. I've had to drill out about seven rivets so far. Um, the one that comes to the top of my mind is the servo mount on the elevator. So let me grab the camera and I'll show you. This is a, one of the reasons of my <laughs> struggles is this ranching dog needs a ton of attention and a ton of exercise. So it is constant uh, attention for him. Yeah, right. Okay, um, elevator. This has been a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and the, God, I hesitate to give a tip, but if I were to do it over again, I would build the elevator without attaching it in the middle to begin with. That way you don't have this horn sticking up um, and have to build it upside down. I built it upside down and I knew that that was a risk. So I had to, in my brain, flip the diagram over and do everything kind of upside down. Not a big deal because it's almost symmetrical. The only thing um, that I can think of is, well, besides the horn that I already mentioned, is the servo mount. I mounted that on the wrong side. In no regard. Okay, hang on. I got his stick from him, which he conveniently hid under the table. He loves doing that. Okay, enough on the servo mounts. Um, what else was tricky? Yeah, once you drill out your first rivet, <laughs> you take your time and you double your and triple check. And in fact, last night um, I was gonna work and I just felt not in the right mindset to work. I, it, even if I would work, it would triple, quadruple check everything and it probably still get it wrong and I was afraid of that. So I did, made the right decision, I went to bed. I found, turns out I was exhausted. Hmm. And I'm waking up fresh and I'm working on it with a renewed um, vigor this morning. Oh, here's a mistake. Okay, in, this is very specific to this build, um, as was the other tip or whatever. But these trailing edge elevator ribs, um, it's pretty much just rib to spar, aft spar, um, down the line. With the exception of this one, is I did, I'm sorry, you can't see. I did rib to spar, um, but then I did, but then I realized it also connects to this rib as well. So I did it um, with, just pulled that rib out of the way, riveted it, and then put the rib back and went, uh-oh. There's a little flange inside of there. So you're going through three layers of metal on the, on the outboard ones, as opposed to these just two layers of, of metal. So those are the little things you kind of got to watch, watch out for. I can't remember what the horizontal, um, or actually it was the vertical stab that I drilled some rivets out. Um, it's just too far long ago. And I, I think, okay, I'll get it and edit, but that's another thing that's going to slow me down. So I'm just going to kind of post raw footage and pardon the fact that it's not um, super uh, well edited. We'll see where it goes. How not to build Rand's S21. There you go. Okay, it's been a day and a half or so since my last update. Getting uh, getting somewhere on the elevator. That's looking pretty decent. And I'm at the spot now. Clearly it's just the top skin that's on there. Uh, but now it's time to start working on the trim tab. And so now I am just, I've got everything Clico together, primarily on the top, which is upside down, as you can see, and flipped it upside down to transfer, drill all these holes, working my way kind of in the middle out, making sure it's level, there's no twist in it, and kind of click going as I go. But that's the update. Man, this elevator and trim tab process is so slow. I did just finish the trim tab, um, which is, by the way, the biggest trim tab for a small airplane I've ever seen. The kit box moves the whole stabilizer, uh, kind of like a piper. Okay, so let me show you fitting up the hinges for the trim tab. Okay, I got the trim tab nearly done. I'm just working up the hinges right now, fitting them up. And let me show you something that kind of scared me a little bit. I was kind of eyeballing the the trim tab there and, and working on that center hinge. And I kind of got down low and I, I got to see that it wasn't lined up perfectly. It's looking actually pretty decent right now. What I'm talking about is the gap here was bigger than the gap here. And then it goes back out again. So clearly um, there was an issue, a fitment or alignment issue. So 
what I did was I got down low and really looked at, sorry about the angle there, but looked at the, just the, the alignment, you get to focus way out there, the alignment and noticed that this area was, um, was actually um, needing to be compressed a little bit. So I got, pulled the trim tab off, or away, and got this hinge, or this clamp, and was able to kind of pull it together just a hair. You can see how it pulls together. Now, I'm not worried about that um, in the end being a problem because the skins are gonna pull it together, but for right now, the fitment of the hinges uh, is contingent upon everything being lined up. So anyway, that's um, that's kind of one thing that scared me at first, but I think it's gonna work out okay. You can see, I just kind of marked the lateral spacing of the hinge, referenced the holes, and then the vertical, I tape, put a tape here and aligned it front and uh, up and down, taped it, and then just pulled a Sharpie and marked all five holes for the left and the right. And now I gotta put the clamp back on and get the fitment of the center hinge, mark them, drill them, and, and then, once those are drilled, then I'll start working on the trim tab side of the piano hinge. Okay, again, the these clamps are here just to make sure everything is nice and straight that I think when I put on the bottom skin, everything will line up great. And so I want it to line up great right now. So the uh, first step on the center line uh, piano hinge is um, I marked up with a sharpie. You know, I kind of aligned it to the to be cent central to all these holes. Marked a little mark there and there. And now I'm taking a piece of blue tape. Mark the lateral. Probably only need to do one side, but it's okay. Okay, then I put a piece of tape along the length of the piano hinge for the vertical portion. And it's not a perfect science. So what I'm looking for is um, pretty much aligned with the beginning of the radius of the spar on the top, or this is upside down, so on the bottom, I suppose. And then on the top, the top of the hinge is aligned with the top of the spar, and so the skin will be just slightly above it. So in effect, in effect it'll be uh, mostly hidden, and that it's level. Okay, so. Now that's all marked up, just hold it in, and then you just mark the holes. Yeah, <clears throat> that's another thing I should mention. I, I have everything marked. If you, my scratch, chicken scratch, that's center elevator. I have center tab. Right tab, right elevator, left elevator, left tab. So you, um, so you don't get your parts confusing. You can just drill everything and know which parts go where.
I have some friends coming over to check out the project, so gave me a much needed opportunity to clean up the shop, put out the parts on display, and uh, yeah, kind of take a step back for a second because this elevator is a lot of hard work. And um, we're off to Sonoma tomorrow, actually Napa, flying the Bonanza and uh, taking the puppy on his first trip. So it should be fun for some wine tasting adventures. So anyway, back in a couple days. Shasta, look good. Just discovered these uh, dog ear protection from Rex Specs. Kind of high quality, technical. I think they're made for military working dogs. And so far so good with the dog. Well, it didn't clear up. So we're on the IFR, just the VOR to run my 06 circle and 19 right. We made it to Napa. I'm at my baggage, boy. <laughs> Kobe survived. Okay, this is too cool. The table we discovered has a dip, so we've got this technique that Bill has. Using a string, top string, and then you take three quarter MDF, and you know that that's level there, and you just kind of watch it. Yeah, good three eighths gap right here. Don't look directly at it. Oh. Okay, got the horizontal stab back on the table with the elevator complete and with the delivery of my dimple dies and my no bar micro stop counter sink. I think I got that right, which is right here. No ma. No ma, it's the nylon, won't mar it. Um, so, and the dimple dies plus the squeezer are to dimple the skin and the countersink is to countersink the spar so it sits in, then you have flush rivets. rivets. Um, it's because the horizontal stabilizer fits flush against the tail cone. I'm not sure why you do gotta do the top, I think because of the fairing, anyway. I'm a little nervous because I'm about to permanently dimple the skin. So we'll see how that goes. Just, let's see, this up to here, over to here, and then these two right there, and then we're done on this side. So I'm gonna dimple first, and then I'm gonna countersink because setting the countersink apparently is pretty important um, so that you get, well, the micro stop, right? So that stops countersinking. Um, at a certain depth, <clears throat> but you have to set that such that the dimple sits right in that little bowl and the flush rivet and everything is good. So a little bit of detail oriented and then it is back to rivet central. Clico, repeat, other way around. Let's get after it. Gotta make sure it's right side up. You wouldn't want to dimple it the wrong way. All right, so there's the bowl. That's gonna be like the countersink, and that pushes it down. Okay, we're good. They make good contact. I can put some pressure on it. Otherwise, I didn't realize this. You can rotate this to raise and lower the height. So there's a little hole in case it's hard to turn. Okay, let's clear some space. Start with this one. Oh God, is that good? <gasps> hey, look at that. I did it. Let's do a few more and I'll show you up close. Nothing to it. All right, nothing to it. Like I tell my kid, with the 
right tools, any job can be easy. Whew, it's the countersink that's gonna be tricky. All right, onto that. All right, with this countersink, adjusting it is obviously gonna be very important right now. Boom, way too much cut right there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's too much, so I gotta reduce the amount of cut it's gonna take to write just the right amount. So I wanna do too shallow to start and then get the dimple to sit in there and then only increase it ever so slightly and then once it's set, boop, 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 we're done. Okay, with the counter countersink and the micro stop. Okay, so it's like that, right? And you can see how much depth you've got that's too much. So you wanna reduce it. So you gotta unlock it by unscrewing this gives this some ability to come up, it's spring-loaded, and then you can rotate to get your desired depth. Okay, again, I just wanna take the slightest chunk out to start shallow, and then we'll go deeper from there. So, still too much. Okay, that looks pretty good. Sorry, couldn't focus. Looks pretty good right there. Another one for good measure. So we don't go too deep. Lock it in place. Off to the races. Okay, so there's the center where they overlap. Those two dots line up, and so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just try it nice and gentle at first. So you gotta, we just gotta pull it up to align it, and then you can let it go. Nice. Definitely pretty shallow. Just from there. But. Huh. <laughs> it feels like it's getting shallower. Let me figure this out. All right, adjusted, let's try this again. <laughs> nice. Looks pretty good. Deepen this guy up. Test fit him. Have a helping hand. Ooh, nice. So the way I understand it is you are looking for push down, you don't have any gap right there. Push down, and we're looking pretty good. Maybe here more, because otherwise, if it's not cut enough, it'll blow up. Obviously, in between. Oh, you want some attention? Am I doing it wrong? Probably. Yeah, we all know. I think I would have learned this by now, but always be building on blocks. That's going to be make it way easier to put the skin on top 
whatever, but that should be much easier as a only two hand workshop, one person workshop. So I found it very difficult to use um, this tool, the um, squeezer tool with the dimple dies on certain parts of this rib because um, this radius kind of gets in the, rib, in the way. I don't know if you can see it. So I decided to use some vice grips to do the pressing. So we'll see how that works. Drop your dies, but not bad. Okay, looking pretty good. After a little bit of cleanup, time to Clico, check for twist, and rivet. And deburr, always deburring. A, B, D. A, always B, B, D, deburring. Always B, deburring. Always B, deburring. All right, let's see if it works. I think I need to make airplane sounds. Okay, I'm not sure if I got video of it, so I'll just tell you the tip doesn't fit perfectly. I cut a little notch into it and pushed it forward, and now it fits a lot better. I'm showing you right here the quarter-inch hole that you have to kind of locate and drill, and that'll be for the shot epoxy mix for balancing, which you got to wait until after you paint if you're going to paint. I apologize if these videos are a little bit choppy. My filming is a little bit inconsistent because I just kind of get in go mode. My airline recalled me, so I might be heading uh, to training for three months, which will take a huge chunk out of it. I'm doing all I can to kind of avoid that. Um, but that kind of has got me in the mindset of build, build, build. Anyway, first world problems. I know it's awesome. The pandemic is slowly starting to end. Travel is coming back, and that's all a good thing. So what is a good thing is you hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching. Until next time, you're clear direct. <laughs>